Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to paint this portrait of a girl with brown skin. Her facial features really caught my attention and I was quite intrigued to paint her. Anyways, this video was supposed to be uploaded last week but due to some circumstances I was not able to do so and I am sorry for that. Moving forward, as you can see that I just used a thin wash of burnt sienna mixed with yellow ochre, more like watercolors, over the whole drawing to cover the white of the paper and to get a base tone to work with. But it is very important to use the wash very lightly otherwise you will just lose your drawing underneath which you obviously don't want after hours of precise drawing. Now as you can see I am using a flat brush and I am holding it quite loose to establish some basic flesh tones and values in the face of the portrait as in this stage I am only concerned about building the basic structure of the face neglecting all the details. I will be doing the same for the whole painting except the teeth which I will paint later on. The color I am using at this stage for the face is a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre mostly. Now as the whole painting is having its basic tone established, I am just starting to blend the skin tones because in this whole painting the face will be in details and I will try to make it as lifelike as possible. Now many people find difficulties when it comes to blending with acrylic, especially when one is not using any slow drying mediums to enhance the drying time of the paint. As in this case as well, I am just using plain water for this painting and no other medium. Now acrylic has an edge over oils and it is the fast drying quality of the acrylics which makes them work so fast and vivid. Unlike oils where you need to wait for quite a substantial amount of time for each layer of paint to dry before moving to the next layer. Otherwise you will mess the whole painting into a complete mud. But sometimes this blessings of acrylic becomes a serious curse, especially when you art for more working time to blend your colors. But you find the paint dried right on your palette, which is very frustrating. Now there are some methods or you can say some tips that you can follow in order to minimize the damage which I am going to discuss now. First of all, find a relatively moist place to work on. Now what I mean by moist is the place where your palette is not directly exposed to sunlight, like in the front of an open window facing the sun and so on, because temperature is a key factor for this quick drying problem. You can still manage it to some extent using a mist spray bottle filled with clear water. And you need to spray very fine mists of water over your palette quite often to keep your paint moist and loose. Now for blending the paint on the paper you need to use quite opaque paints with thick consistency and you need to use a soft brush to blend the colors in between while the paint is still wet. And this method works best when you work on small areas at a time. As you can see I will be following this exact method to blend the whole area of the face including the eyes and the other key features of the face like the nose, cheeks, etc. But despite the blending, keeping a good look to your reference is very important so that you can relate the colors present in the area you are working. Otherwise you will end up painting blocks of flat colors which is never gonna make your painting look realistic irrespective of the fact that how well you blend your colors. Another important aspect here in this painting is maintaining the proper highlight of this face because her face has an oily appearance which I need to catch in order to soak her character in this portrait. 
When we work in realism, we create illusion of reality with values. If you are unable to juxtapose these elements properly, the painting will never look like the one you want to achieve. And at this stage, I am still looking for the colors that I can find relative to the skin tone of our face. And I am trying to replicate the same here in my work. The highlight in the forehead and the nose are the two most important elements in this portrait as they are going to define the whole lighting sensation in this portrait. Apart from painting the sharp highlights, I am also keeping an eye to define subtle highlighted areas where the light is bouncing back from the peaks and the valleys of the face creating mesmerizing color effects in the overall portrait. Despite adding the highlights and the shadows, I am also trying to establish the lifelike textures of the skin while working in her face, which is also very important. So at this stage, I will just keep working in the similar fashion for the remaining part of the face. Now I will be working in the lips and the teeth which I left for the latest stage. Painting lips is all about building the layers upon layer and to maintain a good balance of values. Understanding the proper color of the lips is very important. Again they are not a single stripe of color. As in this case I have used crimson lake and orange for the base tone of the lips and in order to define the darker shadows in the lips I have used burnt sienna mixed with Prussian blue. Another myth exists for painting teeth is that some people literally paint them as just dark white. Whereas the case is different, the teeth reflects the color of its surrounding and only the highlighted areas act as pure white. As in this case, I used a pale yellow mixed with cobalt blue for the base tone of the teeth and then added a lighter value along with some highlighted areas where I just used pure Chinese white to make the teeth look more realistic and believable. Now I will be just establishing some finer details and marks here and there in the face to make it look even more believable. I am just working in the hairline at this stage as it has some highlighted areas and a clump of new grown hairs which will connect the head and the forehead together. Painting it slowly and each individual hairs with a fine brush stroke at a time is the key here. Now it is the stage when I have to pull the painting together. As you can see, I am just going to paint the background with a mixture of tinted Prussian blue and green mixed with a lot of white. I am using a flat brush to apply this paint very loosely which gives a very interesting texture in the background. I am using burnt sienna mixed with Prussian blue and ivory black to define the shadows in the hairs and I have 
just mixed a bit of Chinese white with this mixture to paint the highlighted areas in the hair. Here I am not concerned about each individual hairs as I am painting them boldly and as clumps. Now I am just painting the scarf she is wearing in her neck very loosely using a flat brush which mainly consists of three colors, yellow ochre, burnt sienna and permanent yellow tip mixed with a lot of white. I have used quite thick consistent colors for this part as I wanted this to create a direct visual shift of contrast with the highly detailed face which is very smooth and shimmering. Now with a few more brush strokes here and there I can call this painting off. Thanks a lot for your time guys. Please let me know in the comments what you think of my work and you have a task in your hand as well to find a stretch mark in her face. If you can find it I must admit you have a very good sense of observation. See you all with a new video next week till then take care. Hey guys thanks a lot for watching if you want to support my work then please do like comment and share my works and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon which is very important so that you get notified as soon as I post a new video.